Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at querying nested arrays in Couchbase. So we're going to be using Nickel, uh, which allows us to run SQL queries against complex data. Uh, so if you're a relational database developer, this will be very new to you because you're used to running queries against flat data. Um, but in a NoSQL database, your data typically is not flat, although it could be. Uh, so I do have two examples in my editor here of two different NoSQL documents. We're going to be using them as the basis of this example. Uh, and we're going to be querying the array data. Um, so you can do all kinds of queries with Nickel. Um, but for this example, we're going to strictly stick to array type queries. I do have Couchbase up and running. And I have one bucket created. This bucket is called default. You can have other buckets. It's up to you. But I'm going to be using the default bucket in this example. And my bucket right now is empty. To be able to run Nickel queries, you will need at least one index created. Uh, that is the rule of Nickel. Um, it's very easy to create an index. Mine is a very basic index. So this is what I ran inside of the query workbench. Uh, well, not, not quite exactly. You could actually run this. Create primary index on default semicolon. And that'll create a local index uh, for your Couchbase instance. Because mine is local, uh, you could use global secondary indexes if you want. Totally up to you. But for this example, um, I'm just doing this. Uh, so at this point in time, we can go ahead and create our two documents. Uh, so I'm going to copy from my editor. So I'm going to copy the first document. I'm going to go to my data buckets, documents, create document. This document is going to have an ID of order hyphen one, create. I'm going to paste it in and save. I also have a second document. So I'm going to copy that second document. And I'm going to create a new document. This one has an ID of order hyphen two. And it can be really whatever you want it to be. And I'm going to paste it in and save. So I have two documents inside of my Couchbase instance for this particular bucket. If I go back to my Query Workbench, and you don't have to use Query Workbench. You could use the Shell Client if you want. Uh, but for, the, for this example, it's easier to show through Workbench. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to run a very basic query just to show that the data is there and that our, that our queries are working. So we're going to say select default dot asterisk, so wildcard from default execute. Uh, so we can see that we have two documents returned in our results um, exactly how they should be. So that's great. Um, so now we're going to get a little more complicated here. We're going to see, well, what if I want to query for particular items inside of these arrays? What do I do? So let's go ahead and restructure this query a bit. So I'm going to clean it up. And inside of this query, I'm going to actually alias default. And I'm going to say this one's going to be order. Well, order is a reserved word. We could we could put back ticks around it and it would be fine. Let's say call it O. O for order. Now we can say O. Um, we can execute to make sure that it's still good. Everything looks great. Um, so what we want to do now is we want to work with what's called an unnest statement. So we want to flatten that array. And we're going to see what that does in just a second. So we're going to say unnest. We're going to say o dot items as item. We're going to execute it. It's not going to do anything different because we haven't added it to the uh, select. So we're going to get a little more specific here. We're going to say o dot id, o dot type, and we're going to say item. So you can see now that our results are a little different now. So instead of having an array, we have a flat set of objects here. So we have um, pretty much everything in our array was just split up. So for example, we have one item, which was due to the unnest, which just contains Pokemon Blue, or the Microsoft Surface Book. It's still part of order one, so we still have that information, and it still has that same type. So nothing has changed except for the fact that now we have just objects to work with instead of objects with arrays. So it can be a little easier to work with in this sense. So for example, if I wanted to say where item dot type equals game, I can do that now. Um, whereas if I if it was still in an array, well, it becomes a little more complicated. 
So that's one way that we can work with arrays. And it's probably the most common way that you'll find when working with arrays is to unnest. But it's not the only way. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This example, we're not going to be using unnest. We're going to be using something else. We're going to remove the where statement. And we're actually going to do a special uh, collection function. Oops. So we're going to we're going to do the following. Let's see if I can clean this up a bit. All right, so we have the ID, we have the type, but we're also going to have array item for item in o dot items. So order dot items. Um, and what we're doing is we're breaking it up into um, each item of items when item dot type we can say in this case equals game end as item so let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like so in this case it's returning our array still we're still working with arrays uh, we're still working with each of our two documents but this time our array only contains the objects that are of type game so if you'll remember order one had two other objects inside of it, one for computer, one for mobile. Um, but those are no longer in the results set. And why you would want to do it this way, um, I don't know off the top of my head, but it is an option um, when it comes to working with array data. So let's go ahead and try something else now. Uh, this is going to be a little different. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and roll back a little bit what we have here. And we're going to say the following. Uh, we're going to say o.item, so we're, we want to return that whole array this time. We're going to say from default as o, so order, but we want to add a where clause. So we want to say where, and we want to say any item in o.items satisfies item.type equals game end so when we run this both of those documents appear again we have our arrays inside of them uh, which is right because that's what we expect because we said o dot items um, but let's go ahead and change that a bit let's go ahead and say this time we want mobile we only know one of these has something from the type mobile so let's run it and you can see only one document was returned in this case because now we're looking at, we're saying, we want only documents where any item in this particular array satisfies this condition. There are other things that you can do. You can say where every item satisfies. Uh, but in this case, we're saying where any item. So no, no particular order, no particular items, just as long as one matches. So that's one way that you can work with arrays. Uh, let's go ahead and look at another thing that we can do. Uh, let's go ahead and say, um, the following. So let's say we want only one property from items. Let's say we want the name. Let's see what this does. So in this case, we're using we're what we're doing is we're we're drilling down into this array. We want all of them, um, but in this case, we're only saying we want the name proper property. We don't want the whole object. We only want the name. Uh, so this is. This is another cool thing that you can do with arrays. So there's a lot of other cool queries that you can run with arrays um, with Couchbase and Nickel. I just gave you a select few, and like I said, unnest, you'll probably find yourself using the most. Or maybe that where clause uh, with the uh, any and satisfy statements. Um, but it's totally up to you and, and totally up to your use case. Uh, and it's definitely not difficult to do any of this. Um, and the queries that we wrote weren't too complex or nasty or hard to maintain in the long run. Um, so definitely go ahead and, and take a look at this more. You can find out more information on developer.couchbase.com um, and hopefully your, your development journey with Couchbase is a lot easier now.